dear guests, dear professors, dear students. Welcome to our Open TV EU Stars, organized by the Secretariat for European Affairs. EU Stars is a debate tournament within the framework of Youth for EU with university students who debate on topics related on EU politics. I would first like to invite the Associate Dean, Professor Olga Kosher-Valieska, to make her opening remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, dear uh, guests, dear members of the Secretariat of uh, European Affairs, dear, uh, and above all, dear students. It's my honor and privilege to open this uh, debate organized by the uh, law faculty and the Secretariat for European Affairs for educational policy and for quality and quantity in today's educational uh, process. I hope that um, all of you present in this debate will engage into fruitful um, debates and make this event productive and relevant, especially on this um, ongoing issue about uh, our educational um, policy in the higher education. There is no doubt that this theme is one of the most ongoing uh, uh, questions in today's creation of educational policies. I hope that uh, you will reach to decisions and to conclusions that are applicative and um, are for pros and cons in the quality. Now I give the floor to uh, the Associate Professor Strash Kostajanovski to um, share the, the, the agenda of the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Dean. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the, our distinguished guests from Secretariat of European Affairs in the Government of the Republic of Macedonia with, uh, with uh, special thanks to our colleague Dan Marolov, Professor Dan Marolov, who initiated this debate. And of course, I would like to take thanks our colleagues on the Faculty of Law, especially Elena Ivanova, who helped us with the organization, and uh, of course, the Dean of the Faculty of Law, Professor Jovan Ananiev, who gave uh, reference to this debate and who helped us a lot in, in this organization. Of course, I would like to, thank, uh, to say thank you for all of the students who are involved in this debate. This is the first time we're having a debate on English here on Faculty of Law and it will be very interesting. Uh, I would like uh, to, to give a special reference to um, the student uh, Martina Georgieva who helped us a lot with, with the organization and she's, she's, involved, she's involved in all of the debates who are made here on Faculty of Law in Chitip and we, uh, we are having this kind of debate in two weeks from now. Of course, this debate will be on Macedonian, and the students will be, who will be involved will be students from first year. Uh, now, I would like to ask, to invite Florida again, Florida, to give her speech. Okay. I'd like to thank you very much to Professor Strashko and to Associate Dean Professor Olga for making their opening remark. I would like to extend that to the Deputy Prime Minister Arbra Demi. Uh, he uh, was unable to be present today, even though he really wanted to be here with you, the students, and hear the students debating because, of course, he's a professor himself and uh, he's very interested in the education policy. We see this debate as a way of helping the students' community to become more knowledgeable and to engage in dialogue on issues concerning EU politics. We include you, the students, in order to change perceptions, to break down barriers, and to inspire, to inspire others. I hope that this debate tournament will take roots and to offer to the students' community a way of expressing itself in a constructive and engaging mode. 
Let me lead you through the debate structure. And so you know, because we already had three debates, so this is the fourth debate that we're having here in Costa del Chef University. There will be two teams, as you can see, of opposing arguments. The first team will give arguments for studying in our country. Uh, 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 the very first team uh, will have a debate on uh, quantity, and the second one uh, for the quality. Uh, the, uh, the, the topic is uh, ed policy, education uh, policy, quality versus quantity. So we'll need the cost proper debate, and uh, the debate will be judged by the audience. So that's you. So you're very important to us. To, uh, as your table at the very beginning. And uh, you will give the support for one team or another and state whether the op their opinion has changed during the course of the debate. Let me introduce and thank very much to my ESR students for being here and for debating today. The quantity team is Jutta Letkevichuta, Kristina Spirova, Martina Georgieva and quality team, Filip Kulakov, Ivana Stojanova, and Rista Chana. Let the best argument win and enjoy the debate. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, professors, and fellow students. I would like to welcome you here at the Faculty of Law and thank you for your presence here at the debate. My name is Filip Kulakov and as a member of the team that stands for quality in education, my goal would be to convince you that quality should always come before quantity. I will introduce all of our arguments in favor of quality in education while my fellow team members Ivan Stoyanova and Rista Chan will further support and elaborate them. Education is a process everyone in this room has at some point gone through, but the question remains. Do you believe you got a quality education? What is quality though? The sources define it as the standard of something measured against other things of, the, of a similar kind. To others, it's the degree of excellence of something, in our case, it's higher education. Through this debate, our team will shed light on all the current problems that we're facing in the education process, as well as offer potential solutions. <laughs> A key problem in the education process in most EU countries, especially in Macedonia, is the low standard given by most universities. So, at first, let's start by looking at Macedonia. When the acceptance rate for high school graduates in Macedonian universities is as high as 99%, it certainly acts as a demotivator for any high school student to work harder and uh, generally try harder to, to get accepted in universities. A solution we propose is adding an, an entry exam which would differentiate the good students from the bad. Another, is, another issue we would like to point out is the European credit transfer system. As a country where the ECTS is incorporated, we would like to point out its inefficiency. In theory, the ECTS system should allow students to be rewarded credits for, su for successfully completed studies and enable them to, to potentially transfer to other universities all over the, the European Union. However, in practice, hardly any of the credits that the students acquire during their studies are accepted by universities outside the borders, even inside. We have several uh, examples where students within the borders of Macedonia have failed to successfully transfer from one university to another, which resulted with them repeating their years. Another issue we would like to mention is uh, about the ECDS system is that half, half the student body in most universities are not familiar with what it means or even how it works. Another issue we would like to point out is the lack of government budget allocated to universities. It's an issue all public universities are currently facing because the limited budget results with a, limit, with a limited number of professors, teaching assistants, even less research opportunities. This is why we support the idea of university privatization. We believe this will resolve a lot of the aforementioned problems because when a, a university has their own budget, they, uh, they can allocate it however they like, meaning they can acquire more professors, they will be able to hire more assistants, offer better, uh, offer better textbooks, and possibly even offer scholarship to students applying to their university. 
On the subject of textbooks, it seems to be a reoccurring issue. Uh, because here in Macedonia, a lot of the universities tend to offer programs without having the proper study material. By proper study material, we mean uh, that uh, th sometimes there is a limited amount of books uh, offered in the national language, which often leaves the students with messy compilations of several books as materials, sometimes PowerPoint presentations, even loosely translated books where half the words don't make sense. Another way to compromise the quality of education is the implementation of the so-called dispersed studies, which most universities here in Macedonia tend to offer. In a way to bring higher education closer to everyone in their hometown, we believe that the universities <coughs> fail to offer the same level of quality to all their students. This way, the students of the, uh, that are currently studying on the dispersed studies manage to limit the travel costs However, they have limited access to the professor, limited access to the assistant, even limited access to the university library. We believe that a quality education is the type of education that enables their students with practice and career opportunities. Aside from the month-long required practice in the summer, most universities here fail to incorporate any real practice during the semesters, and therefore leaving most of the students unable to apply any of the things they learn during their classes. A solution to this, we believe it would be adding a semester-long practice which would grant the students some sort of credit to their grade, to their grade in the class. It would be ideal to even offer some, some kind of practices or internships with the, op with the option for possibly, uh, of possible employment after graduation. I'm open to questions from the opposing team. In your speech, you mentioned something about the privatization of universities. So, first of all, how the fact that the university is private ensures it is going to be fully prepared for quality education? Uh, thank you for your question, Martina. To answer your question, uh, I never mentioned in my speech that I currently believe that the private universities here in Macedonia offer better education than the public ones. Uh, on a global scale, the American private universities tend to rank among the highest and the best universities uh, uh, right now. We believe that, uh, that the private universities are still not as accepted as uh, here in the European Union as much as they are in the United States, but we believe we're going in the right direction as I've noticed that some of the private universities here in Macedonia offer a lot of internships uh, for their students inside Macedonia and outside their borders. Uh, therefore, the conclusion is uh, that the Macedonian private universities still have a lot of work to do, but I believe we're going in the right direction. Okay, so can you explain more about the uh, actual reality of the quality of the private universities here in Macedonia? Well, uh, like I said, uh, there are plenty of examples where a lot of, um, a lot of people I know that are currently studying at private universities uh, they, they have all they, they have all received great experiences uh, that have allowed them a lot of uh, possible internships and possible employment, and uh, I believe that we're that there's still a lot of work to be done in terms of the private universities in Macedonia, but I think that as they improve and having a a a, a, a free budget. Uh, they're, 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 slow, they're slowly getting better and improving themselves. Okay, thank, you. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Yuta and I'm the first speaker of Quantity team and today my team is also the second speaker, Christina, and the third speaker, Martina. And today the aim and the thing that we want to do is to convince you that not the quality, but the quantity is the thing which is important when we talk about education in Europe, in Macedonia, in Lithuania, where I came from, whatever. Quantity is what really matters. So first of all, since our opposing team defined what quality is, I would like to define what quantity is in our debate. So we refer to quantity in education as to a bigger number of students in universities, as well as free education for everybody who wants to get a degree and who is motivated enough to apply to the university. The most important thing when we talk about quality or quantity is the fact that 
How can you measure quality? Like by numbers, by statistics? Probably not. And when you want to measure quantity, it's really, really easy to do. So that's why our arguments are better in, in the first place. So our team believes that it's important for every member of society to get a higher education, or at least to have a possibility to get into university. Before stating our arguments, uh, I, would first, I would first would like to point out why our opposing team uh, is wrong by focusing only on the quality and why their arguments are not so strong as they believe that they are. To start with, our opponents state that a high acceptance rate to the universities acts as a demotivator for students to study hard in a high school in order to get into university. So they suggest for every university, as I understand, around Europe, to add an entry exam to their studies curricula so they could somehow regulate the number of students in, in the universities. First of all, the entry exam itself doesn't necessarily mean that the university will take less number of students because the entrance exam can be passed by a low score too. So the exam itself, it doesn't <coughs> solve a problem. And when it comes to high acceptance rate, the fact that everyone can get into the university, as my opponent Philip said, like 99% of them can get to the university, we don't consider that to be a problem at all because education, higher education, the possibility to get one, possibility to study in the university is a basic human right, it's not a privilege. Another argument stated by our opponent was about, as they say, the non-effective ECTS program, which is a European Credit Transfer and Accumulation System. Since our opponents didn't give any arguments of how this program isn't working, they were just telling of some numbers experiences, I can take myself as a successful example of how the system works just fine. I'm a student from Lithuania, I came here to study journalism in Goce Deltos University, and I spent here the semester, I learned some subjects, and all the grades that I got here will be successfully transferred to my university in Lithuania, Vilnius University, so that means that I don't need to repeat uh, the semester back in Lithuania, so we can be sure that in this way the ECTS program and system is working just fine. Our team is more considerate and we think that a bigger problem is that not everybody gets the chance to study abroad, to, uh, to get involved in, for example, Erasmus program or in any other program which allows you to study abroad. So that's why we should increase the number of students and not the quality of education. Third argument given by opposing team is that the privatization of governmental universities will solve some problems related to quality of education. Since we haven't heard a single existence example of how a private university is better than a governmental one, it's hardly to rely only on inner feelings of our opponents. The fact that university is private, it does not ensure that it's going to be well developed and fully prepared for quality education. There are great public universities all around Europe, I myself, I studied in Vilnius University back in Lithuania, and I couldn't be happier about the choice that I made by studying there. Also, there are other universities which you probably know, for example, University of Oxford or famous Paris Sorbonne universities, which are also public universities. No matter if the university is public or private, we just have to make sure that everyone who wants to get in university and get the degree has the chance to do it. The fourth argument made by the opposing team was that dispersed or distance learning st st studies can impact the quality of education in a bad way and the person who is learning through distance will get a lower quality education immediately. Uh, since our opponents didn't give any examples how dispersed studies lower the quality of education, we think that this argument is false. And there are different cases why people cannot physically attend universities, they physically cannot meet uh, the professors, for example, maybe they live in a small village, maybe, I don't know, they have some physical condition why they cannot move as free as we can do here, but it shouldn't be a problem for that person, for him or her, to get a degree, to get into university, and to get higher education. There are great universities all over the Europe which can provide the possibility to distance learning, for example, Utrecht University in the Netherlands, which is ranked among top four universities in Europe, and another university is Wisper University in Germany, which received a top institute award for distance learning back in 2013. So since uh, we live in the 21st century, uh, our team thinks that it's totally normal that people can graduate university not attending to lectures because, you know, the technologies. 
The last argument made by our opponents is that lack of practice in, in the universities also lowers the quality. Since the opposing team didn't give us any specific arguments or examples of the universities here in Macedonia, in Lithuania, I don't know, whatever, in any country in Europe, uh, we consider this argument to be just false. That's why we should focus more on the quantity which can be measured. As it was stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights back in 1948, everyone has right to higher education. The possibility for everyone to get into university is way more important than working feverishly on improving the quality of education. We can, do, we can do that, we can focus on quality only after we make sure that human rights, the right for education, is being, you know, in its right place, that everyone can get, uh, everyone can get a degree, degree, since it's a basic human right. What is more, the bigger amount of well-educated people in the society is a guarantee of a bright future, not only for individuals and their families, but also for the whole society, for the whole European Union, for Macedonian society, wherever. Higher education empowers people to make better decisions in their lives since they have more knowledge, they can uh, escape poverty and, I don't know, make all the good decisions they can do. So our team second speaker, Christina, will expand on the arguments and I hope that I managed to convince you that quantity is the thing that we should focus uh, when we talk about education. And yeah, I'm ready for questions. Okay. I have one question. Yes. Yes. Uh, no, 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 without. Okay. Yeah, maybe they can uh, be. In your speech you mentioned that uh, you're a living example of the uh, ECTC that is, it is working. So since we all know that uh, different un all the uh, different universities in the, all around the world have a different methodology of learning. Uh, so uh, what do you think? Did you get uh, uh, the grade that you get here? Is it with the same value uh, as the grade that you have uh, that you could have been uh, that you could have got in your university back home in Lithuania? Is yes, the value yeah. of the grade mm -hmm. the same? Yes, of course the value is the same because, for example, if I get a ten here in this university, that means that I worked for it, and for example, I finished my studies here already, and I can say that. I can compare the experiences that I that I went through back in Lithuania. So my manner of I don't know uh, learning hasn't changed at all. I read that much. I, I don't know. I in interacted with student with the, the professor as much as I do back in Lithuania. So I'm trying as much as hard as I do back in Lithuania. So I think that if I get some sort of a grade, I'm pretty sure that uh, I don't know. It's it's the right grade for me. So I think it's uh, it's measurable and it's relative. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, distinguished guests. Uh, my teammate already introduced me. I'm Ivana, second speaker from the affirmative team. What the opposing team failed to address is uh, how the entry exam will negatively affect the level of quality the university will offer. It was never suggested that the goal to the entry exam is to limit the number of the students in terms of admission. In fact, the entry exam is about raising the university standard. This way, no one's right to education is compromised, but at the same time, the same students are motivated to work even harder to achieve their goals, resulting with an overall better student body. Macedonian statistics show that uh, the number of students significantly drops in the second or third year of studies. It's something that can easily be avoided if universities implemented an entry exam as a part of the admission. Again, we'd like to point out that the entry exam will only be a part of the relevant documentation for admission. All the previous education should be an important factor that should determine admission to higher education. Our current system allows students that went to medical high school get into undergraduate studies in law or other cases where graduates of faculty of philology, for example, are accepted in master's program for law. We strongly believe that this is absurd. As a fellow student that has experienced Erasmus program, I can support the opposing team's statement that yes, 
The ECTS is efficient when it comes to this program, but only because it's all regulated with a contract you receive before you start the program. <coughs> Unfortunately, this is not the case with student from, uh, mobility from one university to another. There have been numerous experiences where students have transferred from one university to another and the credits they earned in the previous universities university were not accepted. A lot of times this resulted with the same students having to start their education from the first year. And have in mind, this example is from universities inside the Macedonian borders. Uni university privatization is still uh, not widely accepted in Europe as, it, as much as it, it is in the United States. As the opposing team mentioned, public universities rank among the best universities every year. However, private universities are on the list as well, including California Institute of Technology, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Harvard, Stanford, Yale, Cornell, etc. The advantages that private universities uh, offer compared to public schools can be viewed from different perspectives. In terms of price, yes, private universities tend to cost more than uh, public ones, but uh, private universities often offer scholarship financial aid to their students. Also, in terms of, of size, public universities have generally larger student body, unlike mo most private universities, which means smaller class sizes, greater class participation, one-on-one -on -one attention from professors. We believe all of the mentioned advantage to be crucial when it comes to the quality of education. On the subject of dispersed studies, the opposing team pointed out that technology will maintain the same quality regardless of location. We strongly disagree because we firmly believe that technology cannot replace genuine human interaction. The opposing team also suggested that missing out on the lectures will have no effect on their education, which we believe to be untrue, because oftentimes professors share experiences, they give examples, they focus on certain topics which are not, uh, which is not available in the assigned study material. In terms of practice, the opposing team failed to acknowledge the fact that examples given by our first speaker uh, were referring to current universities in our country and opted not to review it. We would use this opportunity to delve deeper into the subject material. As already said by our first speaker, most universities fail to provide semester-long internships, especially for students in social humanistic studies. Furthermore, the opposing team made a statement that instead of focusing, focusing on quality of education, governments should focus on ensuring that higher education is available to everyone. Our country is a prime example that this is the wrong approach, as the statistics from 2010 shows that over 20,000 university graduates were left unemployed, as well as 208 individuals with a master's degree. In the interest of time, here I would like to finish my sta statement and I'm open for questions. So in your speech you stated that there are uh, the statistics that students in Macedonia drop off the university after two or three years of studies. Can you tell me where do you from like where from do you get the statistics? Yeah. Uh, it's based on uh, personal experience uh, because in the first year of our uh, of my studies we were about 170 students. Second year we we were 70 and now we are not more than uh, 40. And I consider that it's better to specialize in something that within their abilities uh, and to provide for themselves and not to be burdened to their families. Okay, another question is about ECTS system. You said that there are numerous experiences of how this system failed to transfer grades from one university to another, but do you have an exact example when it failed to do it? Yeah, uh, only in our generation there are two students who have transferred from university in Skopje, I believe, and there were, they were there the third year, and when they uh, came here, they had to start from first year. Okay. And when we talk about dispersed studies, uh, distance learning, why do you think a professor cannot share his or her experience online, via mail, Skype, whatever? 
Well, uh, for sure, technology is going to play uh, like a crucial role in the future of education, but not as big as that of a teacher. Uh, it's important uh, to remember that uh, educational software like textbooks is only uh, one rule in, in the learning uh, process. Uh, neither can be a substitute for well-trained teacher. Teachers cannot be only automators handing out information for students. They are uh, like role models, they are leading by example and giving directions when, when it's necessary. And there is a saying, uh, if a professor can be replaced with, with a computer, he deserves to be. Okay, thank you for your answers. Thank you very much. So, hello everyone, I'm Christina and I'm the second speaker of the Quantity Team. And first of all, I would like to start with this argument that Philip uh, used as is he in his speech before that you've also mentioned, but I would like to get back to it. So basically what they're saying is that the high rate of acceptance of students at universities may act as a motivator of high school students to be working harder, which we strongly disagree on. Because this phenomenon of high rate of acceptance of students at universities has been the case in a number of generations, but we've all witnessed that those who truly had the ambition, had the will for studying, who had the, um, the ability, of course, didn't give up on these characteristics just because um, those who didn't work as hard uh, before now have the chance to get into the same university. So we think that what truly may affect someone's will for studying harder is not the high rate of acceptance in universities, but it is their own determination for succeeding and, of course, um, their passion for education. And also, the opposite team mentioned uh, the competition as um, important, and we as a team definitely agree that yeah, uh, competition can be motivating in many cases, but on the other side, the lack of it is not uh, important and is not a factor because uh, someone's motivation for succeeding is not in any case connected with others' failure to do the same. Now, I would like to move on to the entry exams, which importance the opposite team is pointing on to as crucial. But what we as a team find crucial is the following question. Are these <coughs> entrance exams able to tell us enough about a student's quality and tell us more about the quality of the students than this result generated in four years of high school education. Like, we don't think that these entrance exams that can be passed or finished like in an hour or maybe even in a few hours can tell us more about students' quality than the four years of succeeding, of hard working, of, I don't know, schoolwork, paperwork, etc. So, also, there's this pressure of getting a high result in highly competitive um, entrance exam that can lead to getting a lower result and getting this lower result can uh, invalidate the hard work and the success of four years in just a second so just imagine how demotivating can that be um, and um, actually we do have entrance exams on our art academies but even here those who are scoring lower results are getting the chance to get into the academy, so this is telling us that the um, that their entrance exam is not uh, determining the quality of education. And in the case that I mentioned, it um, it's working against itself, or it um, affects negatively the credibility of the entrance exams. Now, uh, there's this thing that the second speaker even mentioned in his in her speech that especially caught my attention. So basically what she's saying is that they find absorbed the possibility for, for example, a um, uh, student that went to medical high school now get a chance to get into studies of law. And we all know that a kid of 14 years old is not able to bring a final decision of what they want to do or what they want to be in life. Like they instead they come up with these impulsive decisions or in many many cases the decisions about high school education is often brought by the parents 
and not by the, the, the kids themselves, but regardless of who is coming up with this decision, it is not necessary for the high school education to be determining the um, uh, professional orientation because we as a team disagree that professional orientation is based um, on this uh, decision of high school education brought in significantly young age and instead we find professional orientation um, like a mature decision that is based on the qualities and of course the interest that is recognized throughout this longer educational process. Uh, so, I would, um, I would mention this prioritization of the university that Ivana mentioned in, in her speech, and she's saying that in, at the front of universities, we would get the chance um, to have um, higher accessibility to, prof to professors and also to have a higher number of um, professors at universities in general, but what's the point of having higher number of professors or accessibility? Well, uh, what difference would it make if we can uh, get the chance to enter the private university? Um, now, I would like to uh, go uh, to this next argument that they used in their speech. So, they're saying that the number of students in their second or third year of studies drastically increases um, and they also they are also saying that by implementing these entrance exams we can avoid that part. But why avoiding that part should be imperative at all? What difference does it make? Like there are these students that find themselves enjoying completely new field of study just because of this chance that they've been given. Some other students um, may just assure that they truly enjoy the subject that they were interested in before and at the end of course there's this third group of students that just find out that they don't simply fit in that field of study and they just move on, they, they'll maybe go on to another field of study. And it's kind of a natural selection I'd say, like we all start off with the equal chances to get into university. And um, it's up to us, it's completely up to us if we're going to use this chance um, to get to the success or if it's going to end up in complete failure. And again, at the end of my speech, I would like to point out that it is important and we as a team are staying by the fact that we are in need of, get, of um, this chance to get into university, especially because it may, uh, of course, end up to be beneficial for the development of modern society. So that will be my speech, and now I'm open for questions from the opposite team. Okay, so uh, you addressed the subject of high school students from medical or technical schools getting into undergraduate studies, however, in different fields. However, you failed to address the issue of undergraduates of a certain field of study getting accepted in, mas in a master's degree of a different field. To our knowledge, a master's degree means specializing in a certain field, and we believe one should not have the option of specializing without knowing the basics. As a student of law, to me it doesn't make sense how can someone acquire a master's degree for, let's say, a criminal law without previously having stu studied constitutional law. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, well, yeah, it's definitely true that in practice there are a lot of students that are uh, choosing this uh, completely new field of uh, studies for their, for their master's degree, but uh, the thing here is that in practice, in many or mostly, um, the case is that the students are choosing, yeah, maybe a different field of study, but the thing is that even that new field is like it's kind of a backup for their, their previous education, it's like additional um, education, and is of course, um, in uh, it would um, be in uh, oh, um, I'm sorry, it would be benefiting for their previous education that they got um, already in their previous university. No further questions. Thank you.
Hello to all of you. I would first like to thank you all for coming and thank you for taking some of your precious time to participate in this debate and hear what we have to say. Uh, first of all, the, the efficiency of working isn't in quantity, but it's in quality. Our, our opposite team is standing up for the idea uh, that an, an, an education is, uh, needs to produce excess and sufficient staff uh, when the society needs more uh, uh, quality expertise in every field. Uh, I mean, we have a big problem, because if you take uh, the statistics and if you uh, take a look around, uh, we, we have uh, uh, workers in a fast food restaurants that are really a master degree. And uh, th that is why uh, the quality is important in, in nowadays, because uh, government places are really taken and the, uh, the private uh, em employers are not uh, considering uh, uh, employing employers with a lower quality. Uh, furthermore, I would like to, and I will try to cover up uh, the, the four uh, main points that we, uh, we have. So the first one is the European uh, credit transfer system, the entrance exam, the lack of professors, and the system of grading the students. So I mean, if you think about it, what would be the point if you, if everyone had a PhD or master degree, and uh, what logic does it make uh, when uh, who will do the, the, the dirty work? Uh, so a European credit transfer system is really working. I mean, the, the credits are being transferred, but on what basis? Uh, when when uh, some of of other country comes here and uh, really doesn't even attend to classes or hear the professors, they do some research and they get attend. While if they were in their university, they could, they need to do some more work. Uh, furthermore, I would like to talk about the whole Bologna system and the system of grading the students because from uh, a full of 100 points that you could, uh, you could get from the whole semester, you need uh, a minimum of 42 points uh, uh, to go to the final exam. The most of these 42 points you get from attending to classes, to work classes and doing seminar work. And I mean, it's absurd because uh, this shouldn't be obligatory, uh, which we uh, hear from our professors that it is not our obligation to attend to classes and later, uh, if we don't attend to classes, they are uh, simply just not giving us the, the, the full points, uh, which furthermore, they, uh, the, uh, those points could affect our uh, final grade. I mean, if uh, someone didn't attend to, uh, to classes, uh, it doesn't matter if he, he knows 100% of the presented material, he couldn't have the, the highest grade because he didn't attend to classes. Furthermore, about the entrance exam, I think that uh, it, it is working perfectly well for the most successful university in the whole world, such as Oxford, Sorbonne, uh, Stanford, Cambridge, etc., etc. Uh, and that is why, because this university doesn't like students who don't make uh, a good, uh, don't make, uh, don't make uh, good points. Uh, also, I would like to talk about uh, the lack of professors, because which we directly hear from them. They say that uh, the subject that they are teaching is not in their best knowledge or in their uh, master or PhD. So how could you accept uh, the, the, the professor to give the best of uh, his knowledge if it is not in his uh, field or in his master's or uh, PhD? Uh, I would also like to... Uh, Ask you all if you uh, all to imagine if you had a firm and if you had and if you needed an employee and uh, in, on your ad you you have three or four people who uh, applied. I mean, uh, what would you focus on? Would you would you really uh, not see uh, where this worker is coming from? I mean, uh, where did he graduate or, or where did he take his PhD or masters or uh, would you not? Um, I think that university with a big reputation is um, a more efficient uh, instead of the university of a lower reputation. In my fi final statement, I would like to say that knowledge is like fruits. Uh, it is not worth it if you have a tons of bananas and it's all rotten and moldy. Thank you. Try to sum up the whole debate to explain the points of conflict that were mentioned several times during this debate and to explain why the negative team was right. Uh, first of all, we had uh, two clash points. One is about the benefits for students, also the, uh, the quality about our educational system, the quality about our professors, and the quality about our students. And the second one is the benefits for our society. 
First of all, uh, as it was stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, everyone has the right to education, and yes, we totally agree with this, because education is not a privilege, but it's a human basic right. I will begin with the part where, when students finish with their secondary education, and that's the part, the part where students uh, have to start with university, and it's an important step that gives students certain benefits. Uh, first of all, benefits for the student uh, who want to uh, continue their education, to excel in a certain field, and after graduation to be prepared to face all the problems that the market has to offer, which is to benefits to a better society. Also, uh, one of the points of conflicts that were mentioned several times during this debate was the entry exam for universities. So, first of all, uh, these exams does not, do not guarantee quality, and in our opinion, they are only a formality that every student has to pass in order to enter university because it's not possible for an uh, entry uh, exam to tell about the quality of the student, to tell about the quality of education, and to tell about the quality of the professors. The possibility of having more places where students can enter university is good because uh, it gives everyone who wants to continue with their education excellent in a certain field and gain new knowledge. Having a large number of students at the university does not mean that we all graduate. Quite the opposite, it means that there will be a bigger competition between the students, and the competition by itself means uh, eliminating the less qualified ones. We are all witness of greater eliminations uh, for admissions of students at the university, but on the other hand, uh, the number of students that started their studies compared with the number of students that graduate is drastically reduced. This means that our educational system well, is excellent because it gives everyone a great opportunity at the beginning, but in the only, or in the only end, only the best students will graduate. The large number of graduate students gives an employer a chance to pick between a large number of students who could potentially be employed. So this itself increases the motivation of young people to improve their skills. Uh, also, uh, the opening of many university is perhaps the best thing that has happened in recent years, uh, which has also made benefits for our society. Uh, with the opening of all these new universities, we are now giving all students an equal chance. Economical disadvantages and class distinctions are now less visible than before, and the large number of universities through the whole, uh, through the whole country gives the students greater mobility and access, which means that we have a better and educated youth. So not only a rich nation can, can be an educated nation. Also, we would like to say that the affirmative team uh, several times mentioned during their speeches that the practice is not good at our, at our universities, but actually the practice at our university um, is uh, good but because, uh, because it's a part of the program by itself. And after finishing the semester, as a practical, uh, as a practical part from the theoretical lesson, so all the students have the practice uh, while they are studying in their universities. Uh, so, in the, only end, or in the only end, I would like to say that we refer to a quantity in education as a bigger number of students in university, as well as a free education to everyone who wants to get into university and everyone who wants to, uh, want to get a degree because it's important for every member of society to get higher education and have a possibility to get into university. Higher education helps uh, young people to, ex to excel in a particular field. We are now giving all students an equal chances and not only not only a rich, uh, a rich young nation. Uh, also, I would, in the end, I would like to say that uh, the quantity doesn't play any role in defining the quality of our education because uh, the quality in education can be measured. Thank you so much. Мирчиня и да гласа повторно да избира пленен от двата тимови. Имаме по-тоа кратка пауза от 5 минути и да го... Да. Добро. Значи, може да гласате сега и накратко само. Накратка дискусија и заручено. Благодаря за това, че двата тимс. Двата тимс бе много добре и съм много добре, че ви казвам това. Съм много добре, че ви казвам моите ЕСМАР студенти. Uh, both teams were very good and uh, I hope this debate uh, is very useful for you as well, to the audience. First of all, you uh, voted at the very beginning and now the second voting is, for the ones that do not know why they are voting again, it is because uh, if they either they uh, try to change your mind or you still keep the same opinion. So, let's just, while they're voting, um, let me 
thank also to the student which she came abroad to uh, Utah. Actually, it's very good when we have students uh, from uh, abroad and uh, we kind of learn each other, don't we? For our topic, quality versus quantity, it is very interesting because when we say we do, we do need quality in need, yes, this is our quality. Also you here, because for the ones that are coming here, they do want to hear something new. They do want to hear the their colleagues, their friends' opinion. And actually, I can call this a quality for you being here. Because yes, we do read every day. And it is kind of, just by reading, it is every day the same thing. But debating is kind of different, isn't it? Because we have our friends, our, as you do have your own friends and colleagues, and I do have my ESR students. And of course, we are here to debate and to hear their opinion. And why not having pro and con? Let's just talk about quality. It is, of course, important in quality as well. Now, of course, I'm not going to say that you have got to vote for quantity or quality, of course, because I'm here to support both teams, but because I told that quality is very important since we have a very quality students here. But quantity as well is very important because when we are more, we are stronger, aren't we? So, uh, I guess uh, you did already vote uh, already while counting the votes. I want to ask you whether you have any kind of question or remark or saying something or kind of commenting on our ESR students' arguments. Just don't give the floor to Dunyan. <laughs> no, you can say so. Okay, hold on. If somebody, so if anybody has a question, please just feel free to ask because we are here to debate and talk. Why not? I would really love to hear kind of Mr. Uh, Professor Stashko for supporting us and for letting us come here and for the very good cooperation. So let me just tell you that these new star students, I hope that of course we'll have again the other uh, debates and uh, why not? Maybe the next are going to be you and we'll choose another topic because we do have different topics. This topic is very good. 